Hope y'all are having a great weekend. Welcome to another episode of Murders, Mysteries, and More. My name is Kaylee. My name is Desi. Be sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell next to the subscribe button to turn on post notifications. Before we get into this case, we always encourage those who have useful information to any unsolved case, please report it to your local police and sheriff department. Today we will be diving deep into the disappearance of Zach Lafave. Zach Lafave is from Nova Scotia, Canada. Zach was only 21 at the time of his disappearance, which was New Year's Day of 2021. His parents are Mama Lauren and stepdad Darren. His bio dad is Michael, who had some half siblings on that side. Zach lived with both his grandparents. Yarmouth is his hometown, which is located in Nova Scotia. Many people describe Zach as being friendly and that kids absolutely adored him. He loved playing sports and exploring the outdoors. Zach's baseball coach was blown away by his skills when he was 13. He says, quote unquote, I had no idea that it was possible for a kid that young to hit a baseball that far. At the time of Zach's disappearance, he was in a relationship with a girl named Hannah. Hannah says that his optimism is what made him so great. She talked about all the wonderful memories they had together. Even Zach's co-workers said he was one of the most hardworking men they had ever seen. So on the day of Zach's disappearance, this was New Year's Day of 2021, Zach decided to go to a house party with his friends in Plymouth. And at this party, they were all having a good time, drinking, just like enjoying the time. Then Zach all of a sudden decides to leave and he didn't tell anybody at all, which is kind of odd to not tell like his friends where he was going to go. Zach also was very drunk at this time. It was very cold outside. You know, Canada's cold already and this was during the middle of the freaking winter. So that's definitely a little bit odd. Yeah, for sure a little odd. After he had left the party, he did make a phone call to his friend and said that he went to Quinnim, which is 16 miles away, which is the opposite direction of where he was supposed to go, which was... Yarmouth, yeah. Yeah, so he was supposed to go to Yarmouth. So he went the opposite direction. He was supposed to be going to Yarmouth. He went to Quinnon. He also told his friend that he was not wearing pants and it was 36 degrees outside, which we'll get more into why that's extremely strange later on as well. Yeah, it, it is a little bit odd to not be wearing pants. Like, he may have pissed himself because he was drinking so that's much. True. But still, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd take my pants off. But I wouldn't. You definitely, when you're drunk, you do not have the most amount of sanity. <laughs> Your thinking goes out the window. Yeah, you're gonna do some dumb shit. <laughs> For sure. And then there was even more phone calls. What is really odd is Zach called one of his friends. His friend was obviously wondering where he was at, and he said he was with different people of color and. When his friend went to check, and the police also went to check who was all there at the house party, there was not anybody of color attending the party. A bunch of white people. It, it's a little bit weird that he mentions that. Like, his friend could have misheard him as well, because who knows how much they were drinking. Yeah, there was said to be a lot of drinking and marijuana at this party, so... He could have been high and alcohol, a big combination, which could definitely impair his thinking uh, and can cause him to say some untrue shit. Right. Yeah. Oh, shit. Sure. Zach was last sighted standing outside. Uh, somebody drove by him. 30 minutes drove past that road. They did not see him. So this was around, let's see. Okay, so the first driver sees him walking with traffic towards your mouth at 12.15. Another driver sees the same thing. And then Zach is seen walking again by the first eyewitness at around 12.25. First driver from 12.15 returns back and does not see him at this time. Same with the second driver. So from 12.25 to 12.45, Zach disappears within 20 minutes in this small area. 
who knows where he could have went at that point, but it seems like very odd that he went missing in that time, short time period, unless he went off into a ditch or went on a side road, possibly. Yeah, it is a little bit weird how, like, they saw him and then he kind of just, like, up and disappeared. It also mentions that a lot of the witnesses that did see him did say that it looked like he was calling someone else and he was struggling. Um, like, he seemed distressed. Yeah, like, they said, like, the way, like, he was on the phone, it seemed like he was talking to someone that wasn't, like, he wasn't so comfortable with. So who knows who that person could have been behind that phone. Could have been some crazy person. Especially in Canada. It gets a little crazy if they're from, um, like, what people make it out to be. Just by talking about Canada. Right, and Canada is such a big, big country that there's so many different possibilities. And it's like, and it's different from the U.S. Like, it's not going to be the exact same. And there's like a bunch of wilderness out there, so who knows what truly is out there. Now, into the investigation part. So, obviously... When the family saw that Zach did not return home from the party, obviously they were really worried because that was their son. And so they filed a missing report to the police department. And then the police obviously took this serious and they actually found his pants on one of the roads that witnesses last saw him walking. They also found his wallet but they did not find his cell phone at all, which is very odd. So it's obviously he did have his cell phone at the time of the party. So I definitely do wonder where his cell phone could be. And then the police also from the parents were told that Zach loved the outdoors. He liked going on nature walks, hiking. So obviously they went on one of the trails because who knows, maybe Zach decided that he wanted to go hiking in the middle of the night because he was also drunk. He wasn't thinking straight. And so they did look at a lot of the hiking paths that he would have gone to, but they found no information, like no nothing else besides the pants that they found on the road and the wallet. So I do have some questions for you guys. Oh boy. <laughs> Why do you think his cell phone was gone? I think his cell phone could have either... I think his cell phone could have either ended up somewhere in, like, say, per se, a ditch, the river. He could have left his cell phone somewhere else besides the party, depending on where he was. Considering he did walk quite a bit of a distance from where the party was in Plymouth, to Quinnon, which was the opposite of Yarmouth, which is where he was supposed to be going to begin with. Or, you know, somebody could have easily robbed him of his cell phone. This was something of not accidental. They could have easily gotten rid of the phone intentionally. And then also about his pants. Why do you think his pants were off. Do you think he took them off or something else? He intentionally took his pants off. I think he might have gotten a little too drunk and pissed his pants. Like <laughs> some people do, of course, because you lose bladder control. You lose a lot of, you know, like your normal senses and all stuff when you are drinking and smoking marijuana. So he could have pissed himself, thought, okay, I don't want to wear these pissy ass pants, but let me take them off walk around in my boxers, even though that would make no sense at all either, because his boxers would have had to have been full of piss as well. <laughs> Somebody could have taken his pants off to make it part of this elaborate scene or whatever, but that's just a little bit of an odd detail. Dude, it has though, but like, you would think if he pissed his pants, he pissed his underwear. Why would he, like, just take his pants off? The weather is, like, freaking cold. It's 36 degrees outside, yeah. first of all. This dude is walking around with no pants on. 
it's the fucking winter time. It may or may not have been snowing at that time. Considering it's Canada, they do get a lot of snow, depending on the area. So it's like, why? If it was me, I wouldn't take my pants off. I would go home, take a shower, put some new pants on and shit. I would not walk around in the cold with no pants on. Right. That's ludicrous, my dude. And then, the last question I have for you. Do you think that he got drunk and was like, ooh, I, I see a trail over there, I want to go hike it. And he went and hiked that trail. It's very possible, especially if, you know, with his parents claiming he does love the outdoors and all that stuff. He could have easily found a trail and decided, I'm going to go hike this. Kind of get a little bit of, like, a clear mind, enjoy the nature, bring it all in and all that stuff. And then just ended up getting lost, possibly. Yeah, he was like, I'm gonna go hike this mountain with no pants on. I'm gonna go hike this mountain with no pants on, no cell phone. I'm gonna have a great time. Nothing bad's <laughs> gonna happen to me. He was probably high, too, at the time. That's what I'm saying. He was high and he was drunk. So, like, his fucking My common mother. sense was out the window. Yeah, he probably thought he was the mountain. He could have easily been tripping out on That's marijuana. True. Yeah. And people can have very bad trips, too. He could have walked a trail and fallen off or something like that. Right, he could have done other drugs, too, that we don't know about. No, just because it, it was said they had marijuana at the party doesn't mean there was other drugs. You know, a lot of people at parties do tend to bring more drugs. The search continues on. Police had sent sniffer dogs, helicopters, and sophisticated equipment to scour all areas for his whereabouts. Nothing was found, of course, but Zach's cousin got a hold of his phone records and she found some very disturbing information. On the night that he went missing, Zach had received several missed calls from an unknown number from a blocked location. But that's all that she got out of that. She didn't know if the police had more information or if they even checked it out. And that's as far as that got, unfortunately. So, my question for you is, who do you think that blocked collar could have been? I definitely think that blocked collar is someone that possibly is involved in his disappearance. Clearly, whenever, like, witnesses saw him when they were driving past them and they saw him on the phone. They said he seemed distressed. And so obviously with the behavior he was acting, like the way he was acting, it clearly had to be someone that was definitely after him, whether they intended to kill him or do other things. We don't know that, but definitely uh, that caller had to be someone with ill intentions. Why do you think Choppers and sniffer dogs still couldn't find Zach. I think the big thing why they couldn't find anything is first of all, Canada is a huge ass country, and if someone did take him by car because he was drunk, they could have been across the country. And so, obviously, it would take a lot of resources for them to go and search all of Canada for him since they weren't able to get the license plate if someone did take him then they would be just searching for days on end and it could take them years and years and that might be why they haven't found anything also whoever was involved in his case if someone was involved clearly knew what they were doing and knew how to hide a body knew how to get away with potentially murder and I think if he went missing because he was drunk and went on a hike, I feel like the police would have eventually found his body. But because they haven't really found anything else, I'm starting to think that there's definitely someone else, like some sort of foul play involved in this, at least. Especially because it's not the fact that they didn't find just that but they didn't find any more evidence as to where he even went. Or even his cell phone. Yeah, so that's like a big missing piece out of this, is his cell phone is gone. 
it could contain a lot of um, information that is very essential to this case of finding him. Yep, they would have, if they had a cell phone, with today's technology, they would have been able to track and they have not. Exactly. So the first theory is the elements got to him. So first of all, he could have gotten hypothermia. Like we mentioned, it was 36 degrees. He had no pants on. So obviously, you're going to get cold really quickly. And in Canada, it's definitely like one of the most coldest countries in the world. So obviously, hypothermia is very easy to die from that there. He could have also gotten drunk and fallen off of a bridge and drowned or he could have while he fell into a lake or something while he was drunk obviously he would have probably forgot how to swim or whatever. It also doesn't mention if he knows how to swim. So he could have gotten hypothermia that way too from falling into the lake. Another sad theory is that a drunk driver could have been driving by when he was walking and stumbling and obviously he wouldn't have seen the drunk driver and boom, the drunk driver smacked him and killed him. That's another possibility, but I, the police does take drinking and driving very seriously. So I feel like they would have definitely been able to find his remains if it if that was the case because they definitely take that really seriously and there's some serious consequences to that and obviously they would have found like a bunch of blood or like blood trails and they would have found his body and that was not the case so I don't think a drunk driver hit him so this the only two out of this that I believe that possibly did happen would be hypothermia or drowning. You see it. My question to you, Desi, is how likely do you think it is that he died from hypothermia? Well, I think it's very likely, um, combined with the fact that he had no pants on, he was walking in the cold for an excessive amount of hours being that it was 36 degrees outside, which is very close to a freezing point. He could have very easily maybe huddled under a bush or some type of shrubbery and he could have died there. Another thing I haven't mentioned yet is, do you think wildlife such as like a bear or elk got to him and just ate him alive? <laughs> I would say hell yeah, but Canada does have a lot of elk and bears, of course, yes. naturally. But if it was the case that they had eaten him alive, there would have been some sort of like carcass left by, by them from what they didn't eat that they would have found maybe off a trail or somewhere in the woods. And the fact that they did not find one makes it like less likely for him to be mauled by a bear or an elk. But it's not, like, something we can fully rule out. Right. Yeah, because they do have a lot of wildlife out there. And if you got a bear coming at you, you there's only so much you can do. Polar bears are really, really evil. Bears are twice the size of humans. Yeah. We stand no chance against them big furry fuckers. And even I've seen videos of like elk jumping in front of cars and it seriously tears up your car. So elk oh, cars, fucking deer. they can freaking trample you. Bro, they're invincible. They get hit, they walk up. Now yeah, we have no They're just like, whatever. So theory two, foul play. It is very well known that your mouth had a drug problem. Some people do believe that Zach may have been involved and that he got into trouble with some big guys. So that would have led to him being nicked, killed off. The missed calls could have been from the un from the unknown number could have been from these guys. But Zach's family claims that he wasn't involved with drugs, and they mean it with a realistic perspective, not just out of love. His family had his bank records, information on his hangout spots, and conversations with friends to establish their statement. 
But it's still possible he could have been involved with some guys, and they just didn't know it. The parents are very in denial about this, of course. Just like any parent is going to be, because, you know, they want to believe that their child has, you know, their own best interest at heart. But people do get involved with right. bad people. Yeah, they so, want their child to be picture perfect. Pretty much. Yeah, unfortunately. So, my question to you is, what do you think about this? Do you think Zach could have been involved with drugs? I do think it's possible, even though people claim to not be involved with drugs and some people on the outside look like, oh, they're innocent, they can never be involved and stuff like that. You do not know what happens behind closed doors and lots of kids will hide stuff from their parents and especially in smaller towns because this town was only a town of 6,500 people. When you're a teenager, you can get bored very easily and if there's not enough stuff to do, a lot of times, unfortunately, they will turn to drugs because they just want to have a fun time. And since there's nothing else to freaking do in, you know, the middle of nowhere in freaking Canada, it's like, well, what else do they do? So that's unfortunately a big issue, especially with people my age. A lot of them are involved in drugs and alcohol. They might look perfect on the outside, but side they're really not so innocent so I do think it's possible but also part of me does kind of see where the parents are coming from because yes he was involved in a lot of sports and he did really well in school and typically when people are doing drugs and alcohol stuff like that they tend to be falling behind in school and they tend to not have as many friends or their friends kind of seem shady and his parents were like they met all of his friends and they seemed okay but again we don't know a hundred percent of the story just because your bank records are clear and you don't see any suspicious thing usually when people are involved with drugs, we see them buying fancy chains and cars, but that's not always the case. So he could have still easily been involved and that could easily have gotten him killed. When drug deals do go wrong, people do die. Sure. So that leads to my next question, which is if he was involved in drugs and his bank records were clear, do you think he could have had a separate bank account or even an offshore bank account to cover up the fact that he was involved in drugs just to, you know, keep his parents out of his business? It is very possible. I feel like some people underestimate our generation with us knowing about financing and different stuff like that and all about drugs and stuff like that because kids our age are very technology smart. And so they know how to get away with a lot of things. So I do think it's very possible that he could have an offshore account or he could have just been withdrawing cash and told his parents, oh, I'm buying something else when in reality he was going and purchasing drugs. Also, some of his friends could have just provided him drugs and that's why we don't see any of the statements is maybe you know his friends were giving him drugs for free no i'm gonna ask you a really off base question okay. and it's gonna be really out there but what if just listen to me what if his parents were involved in drugs too and they did all this to cover up the fact that they were involved in drugs and these people were after not just their son but after them as well do you think that could be a possibility as well? It is possible. Like I said, a lot of shit goes down behind closed doors. We don't always know 100% all, you know, what go what happens. There are parents out there that on the outside, they look like these wonderful people. And they you're like, oh, they're donating to charity, all this stuff. But behind closed doors, they're beating their kids or they're involved in drugs. And then they're getting their kids involved in that, which in return 
is a messy situation anytime drugs is involved, especially with money, and maybe his parents didn't pay back someone for the drugs that they purchased or whatever. Maybe they, you know, didn't pay this person back, and so obviously this person decided to go after their son, whether they Which killed him or put him for ransom, yeah. Which would make Zach collateral damage. Yep. That's sad. It is sad, but some parents really do not give a shit about their kids. It, it's sad, but anytime drugs are involved, that's just the straight up truth. Into the last theory, the kidnapping theory. So obviously everybody was drinking and having fun at this house party. Zach was obviously cold and like we mentioned before, he kind of pissed his pants and that's why his pants were off. Someone could have easily taken advantage and we haven't found his cell phone and we haven't found his body or any more evidence. So it is possible that after this party, Zach went outside, was trying to call a cab, couldn't get a cab and someone came by and claimed that they were a free cab, just snatched him straight up and they took advantage of him because clearly he was drunk. He at this time was only 21 years old. Even like at that age, you like for men, most of their brain isn't fully developed until they're 26. So someone could have very easily taken advantage of him. So my question for you, Desi, is when Zach was on that phone call, could he have been calling for a cab? Very possible. He could have been calling for a cab because he decided he didn't want to walk in the cold anymore. And if that was the case, do you think someone could have snatched him up? Oh, very easily. People will pick up random people off the side of the road all the fucking time. Especially serial killers. It's very common for serial killers to do this because it's a victim of opportunity for them. That night, Zach could have just been in the wrong place at the wrong time. Somebody could have pulled over, asked him if he wanted a ride because he would know the pants on. Could have gotten in the vehicle, taken him to maybe another party, back to their place, and something terrible could have happened to him. If this person did kidnap him, where do you think Zach is now? I think that if he was kidnapped, they took him to somewhere out of the search range that the police looked at. Maybe somewhere in a different city that was 100, 200, 300 plus miles away. So that way police wouldn't be able to find his body, find where his cell phone was, or find any trace of him. So that way they could get away with their crime. If someone did kidnap him, could it have been, if his parents were involved with drugs, could it have been their drug dealer? Very possible as well. If him and his parents were involved in drugs, the drug dealer or one of the drug dealer's goons could have snatched him up for the drug dealer's orders, like we said earlier, to use him as collateral damage against his parents to get whatever money back that they owed. And he could have very easily been killed because of that and they could have dumped his body somewhere very far away from where he was last seen. Which is very sad. It is, but it unfortunately is very common, especially when drugs are involved. Drug dealers only care about one thing and they want their money. Yep, they only care about the moolah. And they will kill anyone to get it. And they'll put even their own, like, kids in danger, which is super fucked up, but... They do, because, once again, they have no regard for other human life. Yep. So, which theory do you, we believe? I'm definitely, like, phone a couple of them. I definitely, like, think that the police should definitely have looked more into the drug thing being a possibility and his parents, for sure. Also, definitely think that they should have tried to see if they could look more into the unknown caller that his cousin was talking about. 
because if they were able to find more information, I feel like that would help a lot. I don't think it's so much of the elements. I think it's more of a foul play or potentially a kidnapping. And I think that too. I think the police could have very easily expanded their search area to maybe like a couple extra miles, maybe even a couple extra hundred miles, just because he could have very easily gotten pretty far in a search time span. I think, you know, hypothermia is definitely a very possibility because he was wearing no pants, it was cold. But I also have that thought of they would have found him in a bush. Right. A I feel like they would have definitely found his body. Yeah, so the fact that he has no cell phone, no body, makes me think that somebody was definitely involved, whether it was drugs or somebody held a grudge against him, or if this was a kill of opportunity for some sicko out there. Hell, it could have even been somebody from the park. It could have been. It could have been somebody who decided they wanted to take advantage of this person who was drinking and smoking and wasn't in the right mindset. That could have wanted to do so many things to him, so many sick things to him, and it ended up going sideways. Yep. That's why it's definitely important if you're going to any sort of party to have a buddy system. I feel like if Zach really had more of a buddy system and he really stuck with his friends, I feel like the outcome might have been a lot different. I feel like his friends, no matter what, should not have left him, let yeah. him leave the party by himself. Right. Yeah. I definitely would not have let you leave. I was like, if we were going together, I'm like, then we're leaving together. Yep, and we gotta have a third person to be our designated driver. I don't go to parties by myself. Unless, you know, I know everybody. But I don't- Or it's a small party. Yeah, I don't go to, like, drinking parties or drug parties or anything, because this it's just not even worth it. It's not, but some people do find some sort of hype or right. excitement in it. You can find so much more in life than a party, like a career or somebody who's right, right for you out there, or even just like a pet. Yeah, freaking like a dog, you know, a dog will make your life ten times better. Drugs and parties are not always the answer. No. To this day, unfortunately, we do not know where Zach is. His family has announced on Facebook that there's a $3,000 award for any leads, like the thousands that go missing every year. We hope Zach's family and friends will find closure. Thank you for another episode of Murders, Mysteries, and More. Remember to always keep your eyes open because you never know when somebody's creeping around the corner.